everyone, this is Heather from WeddingsbyHeather.com, where my goal is to equip you with the best techniques and tips to make you a better and more efficient photographer. In this Q&A video, I'm going to address watermarks, but first, make sure you check out my free video series available on my website. This week's question comes from Karen, and she writes, Hi Heather, I enjoyed watching your Instagram video series, but I've never created a watermark in Photoshop. Could you please show me how? I would love to do that. So the goal today is to create a simple text watermark with my website as seen in this photograph. Notice the text along with the bar that is semi-transparent. I've dropped the opacity on that bar so you can see through to the photograph, but also to protect the integrity of the text because if you didn't have that bar and you just had text, no matter what color you made that text, there would be some photos where it would not show up well. So the first thing we're going to do is create a new document by pressing Command N on a Mac, that's Control N on the PC. And I wanna change our units of measure from inches to pixels. And the reason is because when I'm using my watermark, I'm typically using it on my low res images. So I'm gonna make this 1200 pixels wide. I wanna make sure that it's wide enough to fit on my landscape photographs. And I'm gonna make it 44 pixels high. Why 44? Well, <laughs> that's just one of those numbers that I pulled out of the clear blue sky. I just like that height and the number four is awesome. So there you go. I'm gonna change the background contents from white to transparent and say, okay. So what we're looking at is a transparent document that canvas represented with a gray and white checkerboard just means that there is nothing there that would not print. So the first thing we're going to do is add a text layer. So that's T on the keyboard. Then you need to just click inside of the canvas and type the text you wish to see. At this point, if you would like to change the font or anything about it, it might be a good idea to go to Window and then open the Character Palette because you can change everything right from within this palette and you have more options than you have in the Tool Options bar alone. For instance, I like to change the spacing between my letters. I like to increase it and um, they refer to that as tracking. So what I'm gonna do is press Command A, that's Control A on the PC to select all of that text. And a quick tip to increase that spacing without using the character palette is to hold down Alt or Option on your keyboard and press your right arrow to increase it or your left arrow to decrease it. So I like to have some spacing between my letters and that looks pretty good. Now I wanna move this down into the center, but I'll never get it perfect, so why bother? I'm just gonna go ahead and click on that so that I have it. I'm gonna go ahead and just click on that to commit those changes. And I'm not gonna worry about aligning it just yet. First, let's add this background bar that we dropped the opacity on. So I'm going to add a new layer, the keyboard shortcut to add a new layer without any questions being asked because I do not have that kind of time is all of, the, all of the keyboard modifiers. Okay, on the Mac, that is Command, Option, Shift. On the PC, that is Control, Alt, Shift, and the letter N. And that will give you a new layer without any questions asked. And by the way, if you eliminate Alt or Option from that keyboard shortcut, you'll get a question. It will look like this. If you just do Command or Control, Shift, and N, you get this. It asks you to name it. I don't have that kind of time. Okay, I'm going to delete that layer. What I'm going to do is drag layer one to the bottom of this layer stack because I want it beneath or below the weddingsbyheather.com text. And I wanna fill this with a color. And I wanna use a color that matches my branding. So I have pink in my swatches at the bottom. It's my background swatch right now. I'm gonna press X on my keyboard to flip those swatches. You'll see now that pink is my foreground swatch. Then I'm going to press G on my keyboard to access my paint bucket tool. And if you press shift G and you have your gradient tool, just press shift G again. That will cycle you through those tools. Just make sure you have your paint bucket and go ahead and click and it will just fill that with whatever color you have selected. Now, before I drop the opacity on this layer, I'm going to hold down command on my keyboard, that's control on the PC, and click my text layer so that they are both selected. 
Then I'm going to press V on my keyboard to access my move tool. And when I do that, I get this series of alignment options. So I can simply click center and that's to center horizontally and then center again to center vertically. Now it pulled that layer one up and I did not want that to happen. So I'm just gonna use my arrow keys to drop that down. And let's try that again. Command or control to select both of those and align those and there we go. Okay, now it's perfect. The last thing I wanna do before saving this or actually before testing and then saving is to drop the opacity of layer one by placing my mouse over the word opacity in the layers palette that gives you a scrubby slider as indicated by the hand with the two arrows. And all I need to do is click and drag to the left and I will drop that opacity. Um, this is a personal preference. Uh, I'm gonna leave it around 58, which is semi-random. <laughs> and I think this looks good. However, I don't know if it's going to work on my photographs. So before I save it, why don't we test it? So I've opened a few images. Let's close the character palette and go ahead and grab this and do a command to select both of those or control click to select both of those layers V on my keyboard to just move them right over to here. Son of a motherless unicorn, it's way too small. But here's the thing, <laughs> the reason that is happening is because I just pulled high res photographs into Photoshop. That was a mistake. Okay, I'm gonna press delete to get rid of that. But what I'm gonna do really quickly is resize this. And that is just command option, that's control alt and I on the keyboard. And I'm gonna change this width to a thousand pixels and say, okay, okay, that's more like it. But let's zoom in with a command or control plus. Grab this again and move it over there we go okay that is more like it and that is how it would look on my low resolution images let's try this image obviously also a high res image so let's do command option that's control alt and i on the keyboard let's change the long edge again to 1200 pixels command or control plus to zoom in let's grab that and drop it over to here and that looks really good. If you wanna zoom in a little bit more just to check, then there you go. So now that we know that this is gonna work well, let's come back to this document and save it. If you feel that you may wanna work on this in the future, um, either the typeset or the color of the background, then it's probably a good idea to save this as a Photoshop document to retain the layers. So press Command or Control S on your keyboard to save this. And you could name this, um, I'm just gonna name it WBH Watermark. And if you wish to retain the layers, then you would go ahead and click Save as a PSD. But you still need to save it out as a PNG. And a PNG will retain that transparent background with the lowered opacity. If you save this as a JPEG, it will flatten with a white background layer and you'll lose that transparency. So let's press Command, that's Control Shift S to save as, and let's change this to a PNG and save it. And it will ask me my options. I will choose none for interlace and say, okay, great. So the good news is now I can access this PNG watermark in Lightroom or in Photoshop. Now there is never going to be a time where I am going to manually place this watermark on a photo as we did to test it because I would never get it right. And I would, I want it aligned perfectly and I don't want to take the time to do that. So and the only way I use this watermark is through presets and actions. I will call this watermark from within Lightroom as a watermark preset or from within Photoshop as an action. I hope that you found this useful. I'll see you in the next video.